Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So, my Keystone Cops, this game, this one right here, is now being released as a digital download, so you can actually purchase the game ROM. Um, I, I already have that available with uh, my fast food game, which, funny enough, the physical release is still, you know, the, these ones were made up for the uh, PGRE uh, Retro Gaming Expo, uh, you know, there was a short amount of these actually made up. And uh, I ended up releasing the ROM kind of first. Uh, so now I'm going backwards. Uh, I have the... Uh, <laughs> this was released first. Uh, ideally, this is the way you want to do it. You want to release the, uh, the physical copy and then later on make the ROM available. So this was released, you know, about a year ago. And um, now we finally can have the ROM available for download. So I just wanted to... You know, also play a bit just so you can see it. Um, well, actually, let me let me just use, let, let me just restart it because you know we just want to get the full effect. Okay, <laughs> that's the Intellivision Revolution intro, and that's my title screen. It's interesting, I. I uh, had a different title screen when I first programmed the game, and then I kind of learned how to use some of the tools a little bit better to kind of make something a little bit more, more better looking, I guess, than what I originally had, but anyways, yeah. So you can also see that um, this game does utilize the IntelliVoice. Um, it's not, it's not important. I really didn't need to, to use the IntelliVoice, and um, I think I just wanted to out of curiosity. I think it's one of those things that um, when you st when you learn how to program for the Intellivision, it's one thing that you realize, hey, I could do that. Um, I can actually make voices come out of this thing. And so you kind of do it for your first try, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm not really gonna do that for all my games. And like, unless the game really calls for it, like um, I, I am working on like, um, space. Oops. I am working on Space Taxi, um, at least an Intellivision version of it, and I am utilizing the voice for that because it makes sense and, and the original game has it. Uh, whereas this, I kind of just threw it in there. I don't know. I mean, the problem is I didn't do any detection to make sure that uh, if the Intellivoice isn't plugged in to um, make a, a sound in its place. So uh, if you're not, if you don't have the IntelliVoice plugged into your Intellivision, or if your uh, emulator is not using the IntelliVoice, then there's uh, an absence of sound there. So, you know, but this was my first crack at uh, programming a fully functional game on the Intellivision. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot I've learned since I've uh, started this journey. Definitely since the... Uh, creation of this game, I've learned a heck of a lot more. Um, just various uh, tricks and tips and techniques on how to do things a little bit better. You know, I I kind of designed this in a, in a fashion that, how would it look if this game originally came out on the Intellivision? Because we all know that back in the day, a lot of the games, like these types of games, especially Activision, uh, they were trying to port them onto multiple systems, um, like Pitfall, for instance. You you have Pitfall, and then you you um, you have the Pitfall on the Intellivision. You had it on the uh, ColecoVision. You know all these different systems. I think it was on the ColecoVision, or I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, anyways. So the point was, I wanted to try and recreate this game, how it would kind of look if if. It actually existed on the Intellivision back in the day. Um, and of course there were a lot of ga great games that just never got an Intellivision port. So you know this is our chance now to do that. Now I did uh, take some liberty um, to modify some things. You'll notice the skyline up there. That is uh, Toronto, Toronto, Ontario in Canada where I kind of, well, I don't live in Toronto, but I'm near, I'm close enough to it. Uh, I used to work downtown Toronto. You know, my favorite hockey team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
Now this is this game. It's not it's not running the best it, it could be right now. I'm, I'm using a uh, the nostalgia al uh, the emulator. I don't know what word I was trying to say there. I'm using the nostalgia emulator, which it kind of works. Uh, it's not my favorite emulator, but for for the purposes of me doing a good stream of it, um, like I don't have a capture card. I can't do the fancy plug my television into my computer thing and um, you know maybe one day one day I might go crazy and and, and buy all this uh, setup equipment and, and try and make it happen but uh, currently when I'm doing any kind of gameplay it's either through this type of emulator or um, it's through uh, putting my camera up to the, the CRT TV which you know is never the best I mean it's the quality is usually pretty crappy when I do that. Um, but it does kind of give you that old time feel of playing the original console on the, uh, you know, the old CRT TV versus having like a flat screen. But anyways, yeah, like I was saying, this game is now available for download um, on the Intellivision Collector website, the same place you can get my fast food game. Uh, and it's a, a fair price. It's about $16 Canadian. And uh, you know, even if you have this, uh, if you were lucky enough to get one of the limited editions, <laughs> limited uh, physical copies, you might still want to get the uh, get the ROM as well because, like I said, you get to play it on an emulator instead of playing it, uh, you know, having to plug it into your television. You know, that's, it's not that that's a bad thing. It's just that sometimes you might feel like playing it on your computer. Or, like me, doing a, a stream of it. And uh, if you don't have that capture card, or that setup to do so, it makes it easier for you. And there are a bunch of different kinds of emulators, like I said. You just, you know, use the one of your choice. And of course, if you don't have a physical copy, you can also, if you do have the uh, LTO flash card, you can put it on there and continue to play it on your original or real Intellivision. One or two. Or the Sears. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I chose this game um, mainly because it was one of my favorite games on the Atari 2600. Pretty much the reason why I bought the Atari 2600 Junior back in the day. So I wanted to play this game. And uh, when I first started learning how to program on the Intellivision, I wanted uh, a game that I thought would be, you know, could, could show me a bunch of different things and not be overly complex. Like, I don't find this game itself, like the design of it, to be very complex. Like, you got three, you got three floors, three possibilities of where your character can stand. You're, you're pretty much just going in one direction or the other, and there's just the one jump, so I knew there wouldn't be anything really complicated with it. Oops. I mean, there was some things that I had to try and figure out, and of course, being new to the programming language, um, you know, the, these things here, the, these escalators, took me a long time to figure that out. I, I'm still not crazy about it. I, I think it could look better, but oh man, did I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to do that. These things too. <laughs> I, I originally was thinking I could use sprites for them. And then I realized that I couldn't because all my sprites are being taken up um, from Keystone Kelly and the Crook and the Escalator. The Escalator is actually using two sprites. Um, I'm, I don't know if there's a better way to do the Escalators without using sprites. Maybe some of the more uh, advanced programmers could uh, figure something out, but... Yeah, I ended up using sprites for it. An airplane. There were a few, I remember, a few challenges that I had to really think about. You know, obviously, the sprite limitation. Because um, if you if you play the original game, you'll notice, like, in my game, like, the shopping cart's only on this, this section here. You won't see it up or down uh, of the level above or below because there's not enough sprites to do that. Um, mainly because that robber guy, that crook, could end up in the same area and uh, cause problems there. That's that's what was my thought was, anyways. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I could have done it a little bit different if I really 
fully knew what I was doing uh, at the time I was programming, but um, this was the best that I could come up with. Oh, no. I'm going to die. But I mean, ultimately, putting this game together was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, being my first experience with it. Oh, he got away. I, I still, I think I learned quite a bit just been doing this game alone. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to do a little run through. Uh, like I said, you know, if you didn't get your hands on a physical copy of this one or fast food, you can turn it out. They're both now available on IntellivisionCollector.com and a lot of other great games too, not just mine. Obviously, there's a ton of great games there. Uh, a lot of the ones that debuted at the uh, PRG, PGRE, uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo, uh, are there as well. Anyways, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you have this game? Did you download the ROM? Throw it down in the comments. I always like to hear it. And uh, heck, if you even have any suggestions for future games, I'm always open for that. Uh, just throw them down in the comments. Anyways, let me know what you think. Throw some comments down below. Hope you subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.